gasping, suffocating, distressed. 50% of this salmon's tank contains roadway runoff. 50% of this salmon's tank contains motor oil, tire dust, pollutants from us. We see the salmon gasping for oxygen, but salmon don't take gasps of oxygen from the air. They take it through water. Salmon, like all fish, have evolved to create their own breathing system using their gills. Gills are found on each side of their head. When they breathe, water enters through their mouth. As water flows over the gills, oxygen from the water is taken through the fine gill tissue into the blood. From the gills, the oxygen-rich blood is pumped by the heart throughout the body. At the end of this cycle, the deoxygenated blood is pumped back to the gills where the carbon dioxide exits from the blood into the water and fresh oxygen is taken in. It seems by being exposed to roadway runoff, salmon experience a malfunction in their breathing system, not allowing them to use oxygen from the water. The gasping at the surface indicates some kind of cardiorespiratory distress. This quickly leads to loss of equilibrium and can be a sign of neurological damage. After being exposed to roadway runoff, a key symptom in salmon is a dramatic rise in a particular ratio, the ratio called hematocrit. Hematocrit is a ratio of the volume of red blood cells to the total volume of blood. Higher hematocrit, thicker the blood. Imagine kind of a sluggish flow of blood going through your veins. It might feel like a sudden drop in energy. In fish, higher hematocrit is usually part of the fight or flight response. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which delivers oxygen to tissues and carries away CO2. So higher hematocrit means higher red blood cells, which means higher hemoglobin. Higher hemoglobin allows the fish to meet a higher oxygen demand if the fish has to swim away from a predator or even pass through water that might have low dissolved oxygen. Under most stressful circumstances, a hematocrit rise is a beneficial response, but there's a point where the hematocrit becomes so thick that it's difficult to circulate through blood vessels. This impairs oxygen delivery to tissues and promotes clotting. This figure is showing that the hematocrit in coho exposed to runoff increased from 30 to 40 percent to as high as 70 to 80 percent. This is a red flag and may indicate that the fish is losing blood plasma because the hematocrit has risen to a point that cannot be explained by just stress alone. The two most important places where you would not want to see leaky blood vessels are in the gills and also in their brain. Blood vessels in their gills and brain contain barriers that make sure blood plasma gets to where it needs to go, kind of like a hose. Blood plasma helps your body recover from injury, distribute nutrients, remove waste, and prevent infection. Blood plasma passes through microvessels. The walls of the microvessels are made from a layer of endothelial cells. The wall is known as the blood-brain barrier. We all know cells are very small, so small that a single human cell might be just one-tenth of the diameter of a single strand of your hair. Imagine something that small building a wall. There must be billions required to form a blood-brain barrier. The spaces between each of these endothelial cells are sealed by tight junctions that prevent toxic substances in the blood from spreading to the central nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. These junctions can be opened and closed to monitor the passage of chemical or electrical signals from one cell to its partner. This is super helpful for all kinds of crucial functions, unless the wrong chemicals are moving through. So here's the experimental question. If salmon are exposed to roadway runoff, does the blood brain barrier weaken? We do know that a faulty blood-brain barrier leads to plasma leaking. Scientists test this by injecting fluorescent tracers into the blood. This allows them to follow the blood throughout the body. Under normal lighting, the fluorescent tracer cannot be seen. However, under a black light, it is visible and can reveal areas of potential exposure. 
It's like you're walking across a dark gym wearing some fluorescent plastic stuff, plus black sweatpants and a black hoodie, and then somebody turns on a black light. They can't see you, but they can definitely see traces of fluorescent plastic stuff. So how could we use this technique to design an experiment for analyzing the impact of stormwater runoff on the strength of the blood-brain barrier? The experimental variable would be a coho salmon exposed to runoff. The controlled variable would be a coho salmon not exposed to runoff, only clean water. To test for impact, we would record the results of the blood-brain barrier after injecting the fluorescent tracer into the blood. When exposed to runoff, coho salmon had a faulty blood-brain barrier. One scientist, Stephanie Blair with the Washington Stormwater Center, noticed that in coho exposed to runoff, the fluorescent tracer was accumulating in the brain region. On the left is an image of the anatomy of the salmon. On the right is a black light image of fluorescent tracers in the microvessels of the salmon. The leak is outlined in yellow and red. You can actually see plasma leaking into the brain and sensory system, and with it, the polluted runoff. When not exposed to runoff, coho salmon had an intact blood-brain barrier, meaning the coho exposed to clean water shows no accumulation of the fluorescent tracer in their brains. This was a controlled experiment in a tank with only a few laboratory fish, but we can infer that this is very similar to what we see in spawning streams, especially the one in our cities with lots of hard surfaces and therefore lots of polluted stormwater runoff. One of these pollutants, kind of surprising, is tire particles. The issue isn't pebbles of tiny rubber tire dust floating around our waterways. The issue is harmful chemicals leaching out of this rubber and killing our salmon. Scientists have identified one of these chemicals to be 6-PPD quinone. Occasionally, you may find me taking walks. Walks that go up and down the cracked cement sidewalks near my home. If all of a sudden I couldn't breathe, all of a sudden I was gasping, suffocating, and distressed on the cracked cement sidewalk next to my home, I would be scared. Try and keep from falling. Try and walk up my driveway to my front door. I would try and think. What's happening to me?